So you've just gone no contact with a narcissist in your life. Now what? Well, I can tell you what happens next is not always pretty, but it's usually predictable. I'm going to talk through 14 things that you might expect from a narcissist when you go no contact. And really upfront, I can tell you all of these things fit into one of four categories. So the first category answers the question, will I ever hear from the narcissist again? And the answer is usually yes, but not always. And the one thing I want to stress is that if that happens, it has nothing to do with you or your value. There are some narcissists that just do not go back. They're always looking for fresh supply. And even if that doesn't describe the narcissist you're with, if they don't come back, look at it as a blessing in disguise. Or maybe it's a blessing right out in the open, depending on how you feel right now. So the other three categories that we're going to look at are hoovering smear campaign and revenge. And the last two overlap a little bit sometimes. So hoovering is when the narcissist tries to get you back. This is when they appear vulnerable and they appear to be sorry for the way that they've treated you. And sometimes they'll come through with what I call faux apologies, fake apologies. And they might actually say the words, I'm sorry, or imply that they're sorry. And sometimes they don't say that at all, but if you want this person to be sorry, if you really know the words you want to hear and you so desperately want to hear them, sometimes we read between the lines and we give people credit for things that they didn't actually say or mean. And that can get us into a lot of hot water. If you've been clear about your wants and your needs and yet they still hurt you in the same way over and over again, the one thing you can assume is that they're doing it with intention. They knew what they were doing when they were doing it and they didn't care. So the smear campaign and revenge, we'll talk about more as we get through the 14 things on this list. But really, this is when the narcissist is hurt by your actions and they want you to know it. Right, so now let's get to the 14 things you can expect when you go no contact with a narcissist. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Christina and I am a narcissistic abuse recovery coach. And my mission is to help you recognize and overcome the effects of emotional abuse. And you'll notice that this channel is dedicated to just that. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. So the things that we're talking about here today don't necessarily happen in any particular order. And most people do experience more than one thing that we're going to talk about here today. So definitely listen to the end if you want to be prepared for what happens when you go no contact with a narcissist. So the first few things that we're going to talk about happen during the hoovering phase. If a narcissist wants to hoover you back in after you've gone no contact, you might expect something like an accidental text or a phone call. If you've ever gotten one, let me know in the comments. So this is when the narcissist will send a text that was apparently not for you, but oops, it was just a mistake. If you respond, they will use it as a foot in the door to start a conversation. And it seems innocent enough. But if you're not careful, before you know it, you can get swept up into all the drama again. So now as we do here, I want to highlight one of your comments because there are some real gems in the comment section. So this commenter says, just heard from mine after nine months of no contact. I just got the accidental text. A few texts back and forth and he said he's engaged. I won't lie. It hurts him giving her everything he spoke to me about. I'm gone back into no contact. Is that the right thing to do? So I'll go ahead and answer that yes, it absolutely is the right thing to do. No contact is not right for everyone in every situation. It's a very personal choice. And sometimes your life may be so intertwined with the other person that it's not even an option. So no judgment on people who decide not to go no contact. But if you can go no contact, that is the best option. And this is a good one to look at up front because there's a lesson here. If that number was blocked, this person would have never gotten that text. So that's one thing, that's one area where you might be vulnerable. If you leave these lines of communication open, then you're going to be open to communication. So in this case, for this commenter, it wasn't a hoovering attempt, it was an attempt to hurt this person and it worked. But one more thing I wanna say about this before we move on to the next thing. And that is that we can get really wrapped up in our own stuff right? In our own stories, the narratives that we have about how this situation is affecting us. But there's more to any story. So if you take a step back and look at it objectively, you can see things for what they really are. 
So imagine that you were in a relationship with someone, you just got engaged and your fiance was sending that accidental text to throw it in that person's face. How would you feel? Does that sound like a situation that you would want to be in? Because I don't know about you, but it doesn't sound like something I would want. So another thing you might expect after going no contact with a narcissist is to have old pictures pop up. And this might happen on social media. You might see that they start posting old pictures or they might be sending it to you via text or direct message or email, however it is that they choose to get to you. And these will be pictures of happier times. This is to bring up feelings of nostalgia and to get you to remember the times that just weren't so bad. And if you take the bait, you'll start reminiscing and thinking about the times that you actually enjoyed spending time with this person. And it's very difficult to think about the bad and the good at the same exact time. So if you've just gone no contact, you're probably already in a vulnerable place. And then when you get the pictures, you're in an even more vulnerable place because regardless of what you were thinking before, when you see those pictures, they're gonna bring up feelings and that's gonna put you in an even more vulnerable position. So then when they follow up with whatever they follow up with, you're much more likely to take the bait. So of course, a lot of you have dealt with this one and we're gonna look at a comment from one of you. So this commenter says, I have an ex. I'm not sure if he's a narcissist or not. Certainly has a lot of the traits. Once when I wanted to leave him behind for good, he sent me a bunch of our old travel pictures together. Also childhood images about himself when he was a small, cute baby. He said he just coincidentally found these and wanted to share them with me. The whole thing was preposterously obvious as manipulation, but unfortunately I fell for it at the time, especially because of the cute baby pics. The problem was emotionally, he was and still is a baby today. So it sounds like this person may have taken the bait and regretted it. And that's a common theme that you'll find with relationships like this. If you go no contact and you end up taking the bait, you are almost definitely going to regret it. Now I've mentioned before, these are very personal and difficult decisions. So if you go no contact and then decide that that's not right for you, that you really want or need to have some contact with this person in your life, again, no judgment. But if you let the other person manipulate you into contact, that's when you're gonna regret your decision. So the next thing you might expect if you were in a romantic relationship with a narcissist is the let's be friends conversation or text. And again, this is only a conversation that you're going to get if you leave the lines of communication open, if you don't do a firm no contact and block everywhere. And of course, there are cases where people are really good friends with their exes and there's nothing inappropriate going on. This is not the case with a narcissist. And if you've ever experienced evidence to this, please do let us know in the comments. This is one that you will end up regretting if you take this bait. Just stop before you start. So let's look at a comment. My ex narc never came back. Well, unless the let's be friends routine counts. I agreed only for her to smear me and totally try to destroy me mentally. So often when this let's be friends thing happens with exes, it's usually that they cross lines, that they don't respect your boundaries and that they look at the friends thing as a back door to sneak their way back into your life. But this one is an interesting twist and also very possible. If you discard a narcissist, it's kind of like when somebody gets fired and they say, no, 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 you can't fire me, I quit. They need to be the ones to make the decision. They need to be the ones in control and power. And so they need to discard. So if you discard them first, you do not take back a narcissist because it's all about revenge at this point. They want to show you who's boss and that you can't make these kinds of decisions. So another thing you might experience when you go no contact with the narcissist is that if they have anything against you, they will very likely use it against you. And they may do this in varying forms of friendliness. So it might be an all out threat, it might be super nasty, or they might just be friendly and subtly imply that they're going to destroy you. It really depends on what they're looking to get and what they have on you. Also, I will mention that oftentimes a narcissist doesn't have anything on you, but they will imply that they do. 
And this can really get you thinking about anything you've ever done in your life and how they might hold it against you. So when it comes to threats like this, do not assume that they're only empty threats. It's very possible that a narcissist will follow through. But the only good news, I guess you could call it a silver lining, is that a narcissist will usually threaten first because they like to have that power and control over you. And this is by far probably the best and most common reason I hear that people have gone no contact but have not blocked the narcissist. When someone fears retaliation, oftentimes they want to see what's coming their way. They want to see so maybe they can report it to someone or at least somehow be prepared. So the next thing you might expect from a narcissist after they go no contact is emotional blackmail. And this can happen through other people if you have blocked the narcissist or it could happen over text or phone call if you have not blocked them. So this usually looks something like if you loved me, you'd do this. Or maybe they have a sob story or some kind of victim story coming back to you, implying that you could have saved them or helped them if only you were in contact with them. So really what they're doing here is trying to make you feel guilty, trying to make you feel responsible for their life somehow and their happiness. But you are not responsible for someone else's life and someone else's happiness. All right, so once again, let's go to the comments and see what you guys have to say about this. So this commenter is quoting their ex-narcissist. We aren't committed, so it's not cheating. If you loved me, you'd be happy I have friends who care about me. I could go on and on. He's attempting to hoover now, and I'd be lying if I didn't want to take him back so I can send proof to the new girl. So another thing you might expect when you go no contact with a narcissist is that they might show up out of the blue if they know you're gonna be somewhere. So this is what we call the quote unquote, air quotes, chance encounter. So this is a chance encounter that's not really a chance encounter because it's planned, it's manipulation. They wanna pretend like they just happened to be in the area or they just happened to be somewhere that they knew you were going to be. So if you go to a specific church at a specific time, they're gonna show up to that mass. If they know you do your grocery shopping a certain day of week, certain time of day, they're gonna show up there too. And yes, they may show up every day until they finally have that chance encounter. And usually this one is for the purposes of a hoovering attempt. They're trying to get an emotional reaction out of you. They're trying to kind of test the waters and see how you react when you see them. But if you have gone no contact, it's extremely intrusive and it can be very, very off-putting. So if you want to avoid this one, I would say try to switch things up. Try to change up your routine, at least for the first few months after going no contact, if you can. I'm not suggesting that you completely change your life, but if you want to avoid the chance encounter, it's probably a good idea to just make some changes to your routine. So another thing you might expect after going no contact with a narcissist is that they'll use other people to get to you. And they may do it in the form of manipulating other people to keep tabs on you. So they might ask people to keep an eye on you, or they might ask people to report back what's going on in your life. And it might sound like it would be difficult for them to get other people to do this, but unfortunately for a narcissist, it's not very difficult. They are good at manipulating people in this way, and they usually have people who are ready and willing to do their bidding. These are what we call flying monkeys. All right, so let's look at one of your comments, and then I'm gonna talk through this example. This commenter says, my narc mom has used extended family members to spy on me or just do her bidding being toxic. Been on no contact for a long time now, and I am more used to living without her in my life. A few times we had to be in each other's presence, family events, and I was beyond uncomfortable. So a narcissistic mother will find it very easy to manipulate people into spying on her children. All she has to do is play the victim to imply that the child is going through some crazy phase and hates her and she's done nothing wrong. So another thing that a narcissist may do after you go no contact is spread lies about you. These can be blatant in your face lies. And oftentimes when this happens, it's for the purposes of getting to you and getting a reaction out of you because they know it's a lie, you know it's a lie. And if you happen to hear it, you're gonna wanna confront them because why would they think they could spread such blatant in your face lies? But if you do confront them, you are giving them exactly what they're after. They were spreading the lies because they wanted you to come back and confront them. Remember, narcissists don't always want positive attention. Negative attention is fine for them too. They're perfectly happy with the drama as long as they're pulling your strings. So the next things we have to talk about have to do with social media. And as I was going through your comments, I realized that I could 
easily do an entire video from your comments on how narcissists act on social media. But doing the research for this video was incredibly eye-opening and I saw patterns that I didn't expect to see. We're gonna talk through one of those here, but let me know if you wanna see a dedicated video to this. Okay, so one thing you might expect is that you might see cryptic messages that are smearing your name. They might be not so cryptic either. It might be where they're posting something and they're not actually mentioning your name, but everybody knows who they're talking about. This happens very often. Let's look at a comment that illustrates this really well. Part of no contact was removing myself from social media altogether once his smear campaign erupted. Once you do that, they can't get at you. I haven't missed a wit. I connect via email and in person. This and a protective order keeps him far away from me howling in the wind. It's a very peaceful place. So this commenter took the extreme action of just completely removing themselves from social media. I don't necessarily think that's necessary for everyone, although there could definitely be some benefits to doing that. But if you're doing a true no contact, you are gonna to wanna to disconnect from this person on social media and block them. This way you're not gonna see any messages that might trigger you into responding, into taking the bait and engaging in these arguments. Uh, so another thing you can expect after going no contact with a narcissist, if it was a narcissistic ex, is that they will post photos with the new supply very, very quickly after you've gone no contact. So as soon as they realize that they cannot get to you anymore, the narcissist is moving on to plan B. And that is to prove that you meant nothing to them, to prove that they never needed you in the first place. Their life is so much better without you in it. And in doing this, yes, they wanna prove it to themselves, they wanna prove it to everyone in the world, but most of all, they wanna prove it to you. So if you have disconnected and you've blocked them, they're just going to hope that either someone will tell you about the things that they're posting or that you're gonna eventually stalk their social profiles and see it. And I know that a lot of you struggle with this after going no contact, but do stand strong. It is a trap. Like so many other things on this list, it is a trap. And what happens here, this is how people end up falling into the trap, is that the narcissist will end up posting things that either you did with them in the past, you know, your favorite memories they'll be doing with someone else or things that you wanted to do, things that they promised you. I say this often, but it's so common that it deserves repeating. The narcissist is very likely to get engaged or married immediately after you shut that door. So that's the kind of thing that you can expect to see on social media as an engagement or a wedding. And if you're dealing with this right now, again, I want to remind you, step back and take an objective look. Take your part of the story out of it and take a look at what's going on there. Now, imagine you were engaged to someone and you caught them doing this. You found out that that's exactly what they were doing. You'd probably walk away instantly because that's a whole mess you're not gonna want any part of. So if you're in this place right now, understand that even though it seems picture perfect and it, it starts to get you to doubt yourself, it starts to get you to question whether you are the one who's a problem, if they can just ride off into the sunset like this. When you're seeing these subtle signs that they're trying to trigger you, at the very least, just know it's not the happy picture that they're trying to paint. All right, now let's look at a comment. He's writing on social media. What all he wants to do with the new supply. Ha ha ha. Same things we wanted to do together that I had said I wanted to do with him. I think he's deliberately doing it to trigger me. Okay, maybe it doesn't happen every single time, but it is so incredibly common for a narcissist to flaunt a new relationship and to do it by doing things that either the other person wanted to do or things that they often did together. And the tricky thing is that it's not obvious to people on the outside, but anyone who's in the know is behind the scenes cringing. So another thing you might expect from a narcissist after you go no contact is that they will stalk your social media and out of nowhere, they might start liking old pictures of you, especially if they were pictures of you with that person. Now we want to look at two comments that highlighted a theme that I wasn't aware was such a common theme before. So first commenter says, my ex-narcissist husband ghosted me for four months and now blocked me everywhere. He was stalking me from fake secret accounts and I said publicly that I have a new man and I know that my ex, him, was cheating. He saw it from a fake account and my ex-husband blocked me from that fake account. Do you think it's the final discard? So that's the theme that I was seeing. I saw it quite a few times in the comments. After you go no contact, block them on social media. 
a narcissist creates a fake account. That I knew was very common, but that they would eventually end up blocking the person from the fake account was an unexpected twist. So let's look at the next comment. Okay guys, serious question. I broke up with my narc, he blocked me everywhere, and he was watching my stories from his fake account for two months. He thought I didn't know. But now he blocked me from his fake account. What on earth does that mean? Please explain this game to me. Is he jealous of my sexy posts or is he just simply done, finally? And now instead of answering this one, I'm gonna read one of your replies, cause it's good. From what I personally have seen, how it happened to me, they aren't through with you until there's someone else to destroy. When they blocked you from the second account, they found a new girl or a boyfriend. You've been replaced. It happened so fast. My ex got married like three days after our divorce. See, again, it's a pattern with narcissists. But yeah, sometimes a narcissist will just fall off the face of the earth. They could have been in your face the day before, distraught, tears rolling down their face, how they need you back. They so desperately want you. If you take five minutes to think about it, don't worry, the weather will change. The next day you don't hear from them again. And if you try to reach out to them, it's too late, they're over it. And this just proves that the narcissist does not really care about you. And I'm sorry, I know that is a harsh reality. They care about the supply. And if you're in this place right now, I have a video that I want you to watch because it really talks through all of the benefits, all the things that you have to gain. And it's more than surface level when you go no contact. So go ahead and click that video that's coming up on the screen right now. And if you like this video, hit that like button before you leave.